Our uh, next and final keynoter is uh, Ward Cunningham. He is uh, the, currently the CTO of About Us, um, which is a company, I'm just going to read this verbatim, a company hosting communities formed by organizations and constituents. It's a really cool site. Um, it's you know publicly editable. You can go in there, look up a company, and uh, enter information about it, learn about um, learn about any company that you want or uh, individuals. There's actually a great uh, page that um, uh, people worked on that's that's a list of all of the Twitter users uh, in Portland. <laughs> um, so you can go and like look, look up a who's who index there. There's a lot of other really great resources there. It's a really cool, cool, um, cool company and cool place. Uh, anyway, Ward also, of course, is the inventor of the wiki. And um, he's here today to talk about teamwork, which I'm very excited. Thank you for coming, Ward. Well, gosh, it's great to be here. Uh, thank you, uh, uh, Selena and Audrey, for the uh, opportunity. And uh, 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 thank you, Mayor Adams, for the great introduction. Uh, you know, this is... Uh, uh, what we have to do now to uh, uh, deliver on the promise, uh, and that is uh, we need to uh, continually innovate. Uh, one advantage of being a little older is I get to look back and, and talk about uh, what I've seen leading up to here, and that's a little what this talk is. I use the word teamwork, which is actually kind of an old word. Now we would call it uh, collaboration or community or something like that. But, uh, you know, it's... it's uh, it's a struggle as humans, you know. I think that the one thing I've learned is that as humans, we naturally cooperate, but that it never seems easy. So uh, what I'd like to do is, is start by uh, what I think is really my best thing was this thing that's now called uh, Agile Software Development. I've always loved writing software, and I've amazed that so many people make it so hard when it should be easy. Uh, and, and I try to figure out what's going on there so um, agile software development is kind of an umbrella term that refers to a bunch of different ways to make software, all of which address uh, what I'd call dysfunctional behavior resulting from decades of misunderstanding the risks associated with software development. Now, um, let me decompose this a little bit, and then this will make a framework that I can look at a few other uh, uh, kinds of uh, uh, kinds of teamwork, but the you know to go to the core here the uh, the traditional concern of software managers has been that the project's going to be a disaster, that they're going to pour money and money and money in and nothing's going to come out, and it happens. How many how many any developers here is that have you seen that happen? Okay, yeah, you know it's like what's going on here, and uh, so. It happens, and, and people get very concerned about it. And to try to address that problem, they say, oh, when developers are trying to write programs, they screw it up, so let's prevent them from writing programs. So the dysfunctional <laughs> behavior <laughs> is to say, before we start typing, let's know what we're going to type. You know, let's make a plan and, uh, you know, and what happens is, in the worst case, 90% of the schedule was spent making the plan, leaving only 10 minutes to do the typing, and lo and behold, the plan fell apart in that first day. So, you know, th this, this over-planning is a dysfunctional behavior. And, and, of course, the word agile just says, oh, well, we're going to start out in a direction, and when we learn something that's going to make us turn, we'll turn. We're going to be flexible in how we do it. It basically says anti-planning. Now, of course, this doesn't work, you know, I, I think it was Eisenhower said that, you know, the, the, you know, you have to be good at planning because you're going to have to do it over and over every day or something, you know, and, and that's, uh, uh, you know, being able to see into the future is important, but you have to know that it's going to be different, and, and, and that's, uh, that's what Agile's about. Now, uh, the innovation here is to realize the innovation in teamwork is to realize that the team itself has to learn. I mean, the people may already know, but they have to find the words, they have to know how to talk to each other to talk about what they're gonna do together. And especially, 
they have to know how to talk to a customer, and the customer has to learn how to talk to them. So we say that Agile teams learn to serve the previously invisible needs of their customers. And it's invisible because they can't write it down. They couldn't get it into the plan. They couldn't say exactly what they need. And so what's cool about Agile is you talk by making software, and then you talk about the software, and gosh, I wish it were more like this. And then you say, well, why do you wish that? And, and you have this conversation that surfaces needs that were previously invisible. The, the customer couldn't even articulate them until there was something in front of them. And you're talking about things in the real world. So this is, this is neat, and I love how it works. And, and the thing that I love about it is once you do it, you realize it's easy. It sounds hard until you do it, and then you realize it's easy because it's a natural thing to talk about uh, you know, basically the shared experience of watching this you know, software come to life. Now, uh, one thing that we do in Agile to make this easy is we say, we want to form the teams, we want to organize the teams by putting them close together. Let's get close together so we can overhear each other, we're never far apart, we hear how people talk. I love the part where you have two people working on one program at the same time, watching each other type. We call it pair programming. That is radical co-location, and that is an organizing principle for uh, uh, this team. And the second thing is we always have to keep in mind uh, what we're doing and why we're doing it for who we're doing it. So I say that that activity, while we're talking about how the software is going, we have to remember that we're doing this for our customer. That's a strong theme in Agile. All software isn't necessarily done for a customer, but in Agile it tends to be done for a customer. That's the person who's paying your bills. That's the customer. The person who, who has a decision to stop the project by stopping the funding. And, and that's, uh, that's important. So let me, let me summarize this here. So this is Agile. And the concern that managers have is the risk of a project. They create a barrier to progress, inadvertently called the plan. That's something that needs to be overcome. Through innovations in teamwork, we're able to uh, uh, bypass that barrier, basically reverse the need of planning to come up with a, a, a team that understands how to do something serving a customer better than the plan. So I actually think a great way to innovate is take something that you know to be true and reverse it. So in this case, we say we're going to reverse the plan, we're going to be agile instead, and we're going to see how that works, and that's innovation. Now this is all a setup because it gets me talk about another one of these. This is Wiki. I made Wiki to host a worldwide community, not a bunch of people in a room, but a people all over the world who wanted to talk about software development. It was an activist thing. We were there to change the way software development was done. Uh, but in the process of just trying to organize these people for this purpose, I kind of accidentally uh, reversed uh, what would be an approach to knowledge. So, so let's, let's just talk, in, in, now here think in terms of Wikipedia. Wikipedia causes a lot of hand-wringing among people who are traditionally responsible for assembling knowledge because it's like, how does this possibly work? Because what we've done there is we've taken another barrier, and that is the barrier of, I'll call it privilege. Here's an expert. This guy has a degree. You know, he's tenured. You know, he is the person who gets to say what's true and not true. You, as a person who's just experiencing the real world without all those credentials, don't get to say. Well, that's crazy. You know, privilege doesn't give you any more human understanding. And what we've done is in Wiki, well, in particular, uh, like I said, this whole planning thing they were going off in the wrong direction. We said, people who finish programs need get to talk about what it's like to program, and they're the ones that matter, not the people who have credentials 
you know, in an academic setting and don't actually finish programs. We talk to people who finish programs and say, well, what's it like to finish a program? And that is important. Now, if we talk about like Wikipedia, it's a famous thing, it's full of all kinds of stuff, and it's like, how did this get so good? Well, it turns out it's teamwork, but it's not one gigantic team or it's not some big voting system, it's who's paying attention. So teams organize in Wikipedia or on any wiki by just paying attention. You know, if you're there and you care about it and you watch what goes on and you know, get to know the people there and you can say something with authority because you've been there, uh, then uh, that, that makes you value. Another thing that's going on is, uh, you know, it's not so much chest beating on Wikipedia or any wiki that I like. It's more about I'm here to give what I know to the reader. I want the reader to find something valuable to the reader. I don't want to demand attention by putting my name all over it. In fact, the names, the authorship is kind of buried in Wikipedia. You have to dig to find it. So there's really a sense of serving somebody. There's teams that organize to do that service. There's a great one here in Project Oregon. You know, it's all about Oregon. And, and boy, they know how to dig through the archives here to find factual stuff about Oregon history. Uh, and, uh, and that overcomes the traditional privilege uh, that says, oh, you have some sort of credential that lets you talk. Big deal. This is great. This, uh, you know, the Agile is possible because the technology emerged that let us change our mind about what we're doing every week, uh, when we computer program. Here the technology is just this internet. You know, the fact that I can assemble these people and they have enough free time to do it. Okay, a little more apropos here, I think. Uh, this whole phenomenon, how can open source people be so smart? You know, where, how do they figure out all this stuff? And, and again, it, it's because you can get in there and look at what other people are doing. You can riff on the idea there's an openness to it. Uh, and, and, and so here I'll say, going back to this formula, the concern people had is they're putting all this money into software and they think, oh my gosh, that software is really valuable. I've got to, because I have this misunderstanding of property, I said, I've got to hold on to it tight. I can't let go of that property. Like, like, if, like if you copied my software, it's like I wouldn't get to use it anymore. Like that would be bad for me. And that's of course not true. If you're using my software, it's actually good for me because, you know, well, you know, you're, I don't need to explain all this, but uh, the, the, the barrier that was constructed is this notion of licensing software. The whole notion that, you know, and the free licenses are actually turning a, a bad idea in on itself, but the whole notion that, that, that you can own software is crazy. You know, uh, the patent office got it right when I was thinking of like mathematics. You know, it says you can't patent a formula. You know, it's just out there. And in that sense, software should have been like a formula. Uh, you know, so, so some clever licensing is sort of, you know, kind of destroyed that. But, but going back to teamwork here, the thing that matters even more than defeating this whole licensing misunderstanding is being, assembled being able to assemble teams. These are assembling teams of committers and, and uh, the whole notion of doing that by merit. The fact that I can get to know you and I can say, you understand how this software is done. I'm going to give you the right to change it. And these networks of committers is a wonderful innovation in uh, a teamwork. And, you know, it's no, it just came out of doing this. Now, one thing that, you know, I'm not sure this is always true, but, you know, if you talk to open source guys, they'll say, well, and the other thing is that we're doing it for ourselves. You know, if we have a need, we do it for ourselves. And, you know, I don't know if that's always true because like Apache <coughs> has all this stuff that's in there for other people, it's not for me. But, you know, but, but anyway, so there's, I guess there are enough people there that, that, that had to deal with that all day long that, it, uh, th that they really did feel they're doing it for themselves. And, and this, is, this is a pattern I see over and over and over again, and we're not done with it. So, so let me draw to, uh, Towards a conclusion here, my advice is go out and innovate. There is so much opportunity here.
to just apply this over and over. Find something that's blocking your way and say, what if that were reversed? What is the foolishness that's caused by a misunderstanding of something? And what if we reverse it and just start doing the next thing? So a couple little pieces of advice. Try something together. It's easy to work alone. It's harder to work together. But what you learn when you work together, it surfaces insights that might go unnoticed otherwise. Uh, I say look for texture. By that I mean, you know, I named some pretty big things, the license, you know, the, you know th that sort of stuff. And it's easy to say, oh, that's the big thing and we've, re we've changed that so we're done. But it's really the, the interaction style. I, I, I love a, a, when pair programming, just the words you use are different than normal conversation and the ability to point at something on the screen and expect just pointing to mean something. That is texture. That's just the fine details. Once you get good at doing something with somebody, then you can tell that to somebody else. Here's an important point. You do have the freedom to do this. One of the wonderful things about living in the age we do is uh, that there is enough free time in the day. You can work all day and ha still have energy in the evening. Some of us, I think, have energy all day because, you know, unfortunately, we may not get to work all day. But uh, the, the, the opportunity to create is immense today. The tools, the frameworks, the, the, the libraries, and need I say the network, it's wonderful. Finally, when you see things, don't hesitate to share. That's why we're here to share. Again, this is, you know, you have the sense when you finally understand something, you think of how much work it was to finally figure it out, you feel like I put in that work and you should have to work too. But if you just, if you share your insights, just finding out how to, figuring out how to articulate it makes a big difference. And what happens, and I guarantee you, this has been my experience, is anything you give away comes back to you 10 times over. It is just great to have so many people tell me wonderful things. It's been the best part of my life thank goodness for that wiki for opening that door for me. But uh, it doesn't have to be that. It can be anything. This is a very accepting community. Share what you discover and, uh, uh, and don't forget to tell me. So thank you very much. <laughs>